Hello and welcome to All Villa No Filler, a podcast all about Aston Villa, the world's greatest football team as ever. Please do remember to subscribe to the show, follow us on Spotify, Apple, YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. So fresh from a historic win over Bayern Munich, Aston Villa looked a bit hungover in their nil-nil draw with Man United. We'll get to that in a minute. And later in the show, of course, Frankie cooks up another of his tasty, spicy questions. Uh, but first things first... Frankie, can we just remind everyone <laughs> once more, we have been nominated for uh, a, an award, Best Podcast Premier League at the Football Content Awards. If you haven't voted for us, and if you'd like to, of course, please do. It would make a, a massive difference to us. I'm sure, Frankie, you would echo those sentiments. Yes, the, uh, we we will only be saying this uh, for one more week. <laughs> yeah, because one, the, more week. one more it week. It closes we in a week's you. time. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like we said last week, George's claim to fame, his big prize is one in life, is a uh, best mime at school. He was and, also and, the most and courteous. And most courteous, yeah, yeah. Got to get most that one courteous, as well. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Which translates as biggest loser, probably the most bullied. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then my big prize was the egg and spoon race at St. Augustine School in Soliol in the early 90s. And yeah. I only won it because the guy next to me turned around at the finish line. And I crossed the line like in Chariots of Fire. The music was playing, slow motion, everything. Um, so, yes, uh, we won't re- go on about it too much more. Don't worry. But uh, yes, we've been nominated for a Premier League, a Best Podcast Premier League. The Football Content Awards is on their website. And it's also in the description. The link um, is in the uh, description on YouTube and in uh, audio, um, Spotify, Apple, wherever. And uh, yes, just type in Football Content Awards on Google, wherever. Go on it, vote now and go for Best Podcast Premier League. All Villa, no filler. Okay, begging done. Uh, let's move on to business. <laughs> Before we actually talk about the United game, Frankie, obviously I haven't spoken to you, at least on this show about the Bayern Munich game, uh, I feel that it would be remiss of me not to talk to you as uh, you were there, you were in the I stands. Was. Can I just get your brief thoughts on what it was like to be part of history? Uh, you know, I don't think I'm a person who gets particularly choked up about things. You know, every time I see you, George, you get a little bit teary-eyed and emotional. <laughs> not the um, only one. Yeah, yeah, um, for all the wrong reasons. Like, oh, God, it's him. No, I've got to, <laughs> got to talk to him for two days. Um, but but, uh, but uh, no, genuinely, like, um, I- I've been building up since Villa got the Champions League last season. The thing that's been on my mind is hearing the theme in the stadium, actually hearing it at Villa Park. And um, and so when, we was, when it happened and the fact it was Bayern Munich, as big as it gets, you know, you... You want the biggest clubs in Europe. You pretty much go in Bayern Munich. Historically, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Barcelona. They're the teams to me that I would be the most sort of excited about. Um, and so the fact it was Bayern Munich and then to hear, see the them waving the Champions League banner around in the centre circle and then to hear them play the music for you know the 40 seconds it was and then the, the whole tent absolutely screaming the champions at the end of it. I genuinely mm. got really emotional. And then when Villa won, obviously, and in the the sort of instant reaction I did to it, I was actually taken aback by just how choked up I got about it about it all because it was like all the memories I've ever had of supporting Villa, and it's been a long time now. It's over thirty years, and you know we've had near misses, and we've we've not won a lot, you know, since yeah. I, well, I've supported us, and um, so uh, I sort of there come a point where I just started to think I was never ever going to see a moment like that ever a Villa like it yeah. just got to the point where you know when we you know Dr. Tony and his weird tweets and you know um, Bruce Ball and Cabbage is being thrown and stuck in the championship and all that and thinking we might end up as a Sheffield Wednesday a team that simply can't get out of that league to 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 actually be back and then to be there and see it and to see us hear that theme the two teams lined up Bayern Munich fans there and then to beat them it was just absolutely extraordinary. I, th- I think it's just one of the, not just one of the best moments of my football sporting life, but one of the best moments of my life, period. Like, it was yeah. I mean, I-, I think probably we come from that generation or maybe slightly younger generation, but the one the one that um, sort of grew up supporting Villa and, and and still that sort of success in the 80s was, was sort of, you know, driven into us. And so we grew up in the 90s when there was kind of a bit of success and we thought perhaps we were going to get to those those days again, particularly the inception of the Premier League in those early years when we were sort of competing at the top end of that, at least for a couple of seasons. And then, you know, the sort of the false dawn of the O'Neill days where we thought we were going to get back in and then that didn't happen. And then subsequently that really didn't happen as we sort of fell away again. And then 
uh you know it took a long sort of 10 15 years to sort of build ourselves back up to where we are now so it's um it has been a hell of a roller coaster and you're right frank i mean i i wasn't there i was in I was in Gareth Bale's own bar in, um, in <laughs> Bales. Cardiff, hoping ba Bales Bales, right? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's called Bale's Elevens or something. Anyway, right. um, yeah, you know, hoping to channel a bit of his Champions League success uh, and funnel it at the TV screen as I was watching Villa play. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I was getting I was getting emotional too. I think you know, you just it just it takes you back, doesn't it? Because you're you, you know, it just makes you think of all the. All the disappointment, particularly yeah. in recent years that we've had, and all the kind of the the, the just thinking it would never ever watching the Champions League, obviously growing up and seeing all the teams compete, teams like Bayern, obviously in it every season more or less. You know, you think you'd never get to that position where you're yeah. actually competing against them in that competition, and all of a sudden you're there and you're like, "Crikey, this is it now!" And yeah, yeah I've got, obviously we've already played in it against young boys, which is a hell of an experience as well. But first game at Villa Park against that sort of opposition, it did feel um, it did feel really special. Um, yeah. Right. Well, there we are. Let's let's talk about um, something that was a bit different uh, from that, which was the sort of quite dull. Uh, I think that's fair to say. Yeah. Draw against uh, against Man United. Was it something that you expected to see, Frankie, given how much energy and effort we expended on, on Wednesday? Well, if Bayern Munich was like the wildest bender you've ever been on, uh, this today was like going, you know, you're recovering from with a hangover and you go into a bar, uh, a low-rent bar, and they're selling really flat beer. And you go to the bar, you ask them, can you, can you change this? It's not right. And they give you a really dirty look and they change it and they give you yeah. the glass back and it's still flat. You're like... Cut your losses. Cut your losses. It's uh, it was it was like hang it was a Barocca football. It was like yeah. you know when you have a Barocca after after your hangover. It was it yeah. was sort of like the big kind of come down performance from both teams really because obviously United played yeah. um, uh, away uh, in Porto uh, on the Thursday, so they looked a bit leggy as well and a bit jaded. But yeah, not not a great game. No, it was really it was really bad. It was um it was it was a poor. You could hear it in Jamie Carragher's voice. His, his Scouse accent was getting a little bit high pitched. I can't believe it. I'm seeing it in the final third. He just can't yeah. believe it. Um, yeah, it was uh, just. Um, I think it. Yeah, it looked like two teams were basically hung over uh, from midweek exploits, and um, I think Manchester United. I actually wondered whether they would do this. Whether it, the, the best thing for them to do was just go tighten up stop conceding space and don't let Villa run into those spaces. And they kind of were quite compact in the first half and didn't really give us loads of room to move around. And I think we were a bit slow in getting the ball to Leon Bailey. I think there were occasions where he could have got, got it, could have got to him a bit quicker. So he could have gone one-on-one -on -one with Dallow. Um, I think Ross Barkley did really well, particularly in the second mm -hmm. half. But I do think we missed kind of that dynamic of having a Nana as a more muscular physical presence and having um, Jacob Ramsey there as another muscular physical presence who could just break the lines of their pace and, you know, impose themselves on the game. And sort of felt like we lacked that a bit in the first half. And then, you know, what we could have done is then taken off one or two players like Anana and brought Barkley on with fresh legs and changes the game's momentum. Um, so I just think, yeah, first half it was just... Uh, it's just bad, bad game all round, really. Um, although I think a lot of it as well was kind of being disrupted by, you know, I think first 10 minutes were moments where Villa were playing through the lines a bit. Jay, you know, Morgan Rogers had that shot, they hit the side netting. Um, but then just injury to concert and it just slows the game down and lots of different things like that. And uh, and then second half, I think Villa were all over them. It's quite amazing to see how awful United are. God, they just they just look like a team who belongs in like the race for 12th place. Like the just nothing, nothing mm. at all. Like relying upon Bruno Fernandez or a, a, a moment of Rashford cutting inside and hitting it hard into the top corner. That that's just what they look like. They're relying at the moment, and so I think second half we were very dominant. But I think where I might be critical a little bit is I think that uh, I thought we should have got Matson on earlier. I was saying it at like the seventieth minute mark. I thought a lot of what's happening is Dean's getting the ball into the final third and he's just crossing it. And Man United are just dealing with these crosses very easily with tall players. Whereas I just thought, I feel like Matson's more dynamic. He'll be on the floor. I think if we have 20 minutes of that, we might work more openings. And I did wonder if Buendia should have come on, just being a little bit different. Mm. Deca striker who threw the lines, does different things. But um, but yeah, that that wasn't to be really. So um, yeah, just, just frustrating. Jaden Philogene had a big chance at the end. Bruno Fernandes hit the bar. But overall, I mean... There's not a lot to say about it, is there? Really, it was just a, it was just a hangover no, of a game. It really was, yeah. It's not going to make for the greatest of shows, to be honest, Frankie. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I think I think um, you touched on the point. I think Barkley was probably our best player uh, all in all. I thought, you know, considering he's not he's not really a, a starter, um, and he's done so well off the bench, um, you know, it, for him to come in and 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 start this game and and play pretty well, I thought I thought is encouraging. Um, Watkins looked quite isolated uh, throughout the entire game. You know, he was sort of. Um, feeding off scraps really uh most of the game duran came on and everyone obviously was hoping that he could do his you know you know super sub magic but it, it wasn't to be um yeah it, it was just it, nothing really clicked nothing really was going nothing really good i thought i thought it was probably rogers's R rogers's worst game uh this yeah, season I thought it was. I thought it was um, by, by his poor. by his high standards and i think particularly you know, given this was the sort of game that I thought he could take by the scruff of the neck, because United's big problem, I think, is the gaps between yeah. their defence midfield and attack. You know, that they're, they're quite a disjointed side. And I thought, you know, the gaps that would inevitably emerge, Rogers could just take full advantage of and do his thing. Because obviously he loves working in space and between the lines. But he just, yeah, he just, it just was, everyone was just a couple of paces off. Yeah, uh, and maybe, wrong, as yeah. you know, as you say, it, it was just, you know, it was, it was, sort of drizzly early afternoon kickoff. And at the end, I think both teams sort of were quite happy to play out the draw, you know, from a United perspective, you know, as far as Ten Hag is concerned, you know, he's, he's desperate, obviously, to avoid a defeat that could sort of cost him his job, basically. Um, and um, for, for, for Villa, you know, perhaps, as you say, you know, they got Wednesday out of the way. A lot of energy was 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 used up on that one. And then to, to, come, to come back again against another sort of, at least historically, big side in Man United... It was just all a bit too much, and I think maybe we just need an, a, an international break. I'm not one to ever call for an international break, but um, I think we probably need this one just to sort of, again, regroup, re-energise, refocus, get some players back in like Anana and Ramsey, and, and hopefully Konsa will be fit. And of course, uh, the return of Mings and, and, and Kamara as well, and see how they sort of freshen up the squad um, as well. So, yeah... Uh, yeah, are we, flat are, performance. Are we um, ever? Are we ever going to see our strongest eleven ever? Have we ever seen? Like, <laughs> I can't remember the last time we saw our actual strongest eleven because we have had just incessant injuries for over a year now. Like, yeah, it, 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 I mean, literally every game we're picking up injuries. I mean, yeah. obviously, Anana and Ramsey injured against Bayern, uh, Ponce injured against United. You know, every single game players are coming off injured um and it, yeah it is it is so frustrating i mean for it must be for emery as well and, and particularly you know in areas where we don't have that much strength i mean saying that you know cash came back today i think it's important to mention he's been out for five weeks i thought he did okay um you know uh i don't think he did too much wrong i don't think he did too much right it was just another another one of those players that that sort of would just was did his thing and 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 that was it a solid sort of five six out of ten job um but good to see him back because it's a position as we've talked about at length that right back position where we've needed someone to come in and and um and and do a job uh and he did a job so you know they'll be happy with a clean sheet i mean we've talked, I haven't yeah, we haven't talked had, about yeah. villa villa you know conceding goals right left and center at least despite the performance we've uh we've walked away with a clean sheet so you know the back the back five will be happy with that so also, did, good did for you, them. Did, I mean, it's great we had a clean sheet. Did you see that ball boy who looked exactly like Eric no, Ten Hag? Hag. <laughs> yeah, I I saw him, and then I thought I will be seeing this guy's face on Twitter for the next <laughs> hour or so from like different accounts saying yeah. exactly what I was thinking. But whoever yeah. gets whoever gets it out first is just going to be cleaning up the likes and retweets. He had the same sort of melancholic expression as Ten yeah. Hag as well, sort of sort of sat on that bench looking particularly glum. Yeah, uh, yeah. He looks, I it looks a little bit like Walter White, doesn't he, from Breaking Bad? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's the, the bald head and the sort of you know that sort of beard thing. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's yeah. got a secret crystal meth lab under Old Trafford. Well, that could be his next job, I guess. It's probably why it's probably why he can't focus on the defense because he's so busy like trying to plot how he's going to get all this. Um, if you haven't watched Breaking Bad, this probably might sound really random, doesn't it? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But yeah. No, he does have a, he does have a Walter White he does have a Walter White look. Yeah. Um, but yeah. 
Nothing really to say, Frankie. Is there really? Know, Have you got anything more to add about this game? <laughs> it's such an unusually boring game, wasn't yeah, it? it was like, yeah, it was. Nothing. It was sort of it happened and then it was over with, and I was like, oh god, it's 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 four o'clock, and I haven't really done anything with my Sunday. Yeah. Um. So I treated myself with a trip to B and Q to buy some uh, polyfiller. Yeah, so that's, um, that's probably what people say after they listen to our podcast, George. Like, oh, what? <laughs> What happened? Yeah. What, what, what's happened to half an hour of my life? Just this is yeah. <laughs> just God, I'm never going to get that back. I'm going to be in Q. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we are. Nil, nil. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the show. Spicy <laughs> question to come. <laughs> and this is why you should vote for us at the at the award for the award because yes. this is sort of quality content that you get. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Right. Should we move on to the spicy question? Let's do it. If you think CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre was bloody and dramatic, you've seen nothing yet. As we head into this, the spicy question. Now, we've not had a chance to speak about it, George, other than at the start of the show. Uh, but Aston Villa beating Bayern Munich, there's a question I wanted to ask you about it. Is it the greatest result of your Villa supporting life? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's got to be up there, Frankie. I mean, isn't we it? I'm we just, were there I'm to just, see us beat Burton Albion two one. So we that's, were. That's we also place. saw Villa beat Sunderland six one. We did, yes, a few years back when Paolo Di Canio was manager, of course. Yeah. Um, I just, I, I'm sort of, I'm just tracking back through the roller decks of Villa memories that I have in my head, just to see if there's another another win that I remember watching and being utterly thrilled by. I mean, I have to say, I mean, we're going back here. The last time we won a cup, 96, I'm watching that. Um, that was thrilling. Yeah. It was thrilling because I was, I, I was, how old was I? 96, eight, seven, eight, eight years old. I think at that age, you just, you are, I mean, I'm still football mad, but you are football obsessed as in I had all the clobber, Villa cap, yeah. that, that sort of uh, um, the Bosnich goalkeeper shirt. Because uh, yeah. I, I I loved being a goalkeeper when I was a kid, just chucking myself about the sort of colourful one. Um it was like it was like t teal or anyway um yeah watching that game and also i i wrote into the birmingham mail to have my name put down on like a list of like i don't know what this classic sort of 90s thing newspapers used to do or regional papers would do where they would appeal for fans to like write in and just to show their support and my name was put down on this list of like these are the young villa fans showing their support for the, <laughs> villa, the league cup right. final my name Zelinski was right at the bottom i was like Wee. so is. all that encompassed and obviously that was the last trophy that we won mm. that was up there for me i think as a as a as a memory but yeah certainly Certainly in recent years, certainly in my adulthood years, mm. it doesn't. I don't think there is a game that does come close. No, I don't think there is. I think it's just the um, the manner of the the manner of the win, mm. the opposition, the atmosphere, the competition, the players. Yeah, I think I don't think so. I don't think so. I think mm. those two for me. I think you know. The, I would love us to win a. I'd love us to win a trophy, Frankie. I really would. I think if yeah. I, so I've seen, we've seen, we have seen Villa obviously in in cup finals since '96. You know, the two or three we haven't won. Um, I'd love us to win a trophy because that would feel magic just to see a Villa player lift a trophy. Yeah. Um, and I think I think we'll do it with Emery in charge. I really do. I hope. Hopefully, we do it this year. But that that would come close. Because that's the thing about the buying game is that although it was a fantastic result, it, in the grand scheme of it, it doesn't necessarily mean that much. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. basically another three points in the Champions League, basically, yeah. which is great. But it, you know, there's no, there's, well, it's not a trophy, is it? So I don't know. I, I would. It's fantastic. It's brilliant, and it's certainly up there. But I don't know. Maybe ninety six edges it for me slightly. I'd like to. Mm. I'd like to know what people think, though. I really would. I really would. Yeah. Um, it is very interesting, yeah. Please do email in or tweet us or whatever about uh, what you think. Um, it, or villanofiller at gmail.com about whether you think that's your favorite ever result. I, I've been thinking long and hard about it. I think in time, maybe in a few years when I look back on it, you know, in with benefit of time, I might look at it differently. But I think it, I think it is my favorite ever game that I've been to. I think, I think I, I went now. I went to the 94 Coca-Cola Cup final, um, which is, it feels like another 
gen- yeah. age because yeah. it's the old Wembley and yeah. you, the, everything about it felt like it was still had the sort of there was a slight wildness of the 80s and 70s still you could feel it a little bit um but that i mean obviously that's all sort of gone now really uh but uh I mean, that will always be the one, I guess, because I was there to see Villa win a trophy so early in my life. And I vividly remember seeing Can Chelsea's getting sent off. I remember Man United fans outside the ground as I was walking around with a flag and they're all in a bus. I was only about, what, seven years old? And they're all going, wank, 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 wank. <laughs> and my dad was laughing. And he's probably thinking <laughs> the same thing because he was obviously a Birmingham City fan, which is still... How, I mean, he's Darth Vader to my Luke Skywalker. And when I pull his mask off at the end of his of, of his days, he'll say, I was right. Of course he will. Um, Does but, that still happen, by the way, Frankie, when you walk past, just on a, walk, walk on a street and a bus goes past and people will shout that at you? Does that it, it, it happen? It happens more regularly than you'd think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no matter where I go, I could be in my, with my fiance in a home city of Brisbane in Australia, a load of Aussies walking past. Wanker, wanker, wanker. <laughs> That's a recurring nightmare. Yeah, Even and the, it's the same people on the bus. Yeah, <laughs> they're, just, yeah. they're just getting older. Same following, following, following you around. around. All these like elderly United fans still doing yeah. it. Yeah, waving their walkie sticks at me. Yeah, um, so yeah, I, I remember that. But then, like, um, yeah, I went to that game with my uncle Steve and dinner. But and I remember, but with my dad as well. I remember my dad sitting next to me. Who he just he. It's so funny that I'm such a Villa fan that he just cannot stand Villa. And because he, he's such a blues fan. Mm. And um, I remember jumping up when Villa scored and the whole crowd jumping up and celebrating. My dad just rooted to his seat, like just would not, couldn't handle it at all. And um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was uh, really special that. So I think that's probably my number one. But I mean, to be honest, like we've had a lot of great results, uh, you know, over time, but most of them are in the Unai Emery era. I think a lot of my favourite results are all Unai Emery games. The Newcastle three mm. 0 to me was the moment where I felt like we are serious. This is the team we can do things. We because Newcastle that season felt they didn't lose. I think they lost like five games that season. They were they were pretty they were really good, um, and we just absolutely destroyed them. Um, and it showed this wasn't just a flash in the pan. We we were the real deal. And then uh, you know, beating Man City 1-0, Arsenal 1-0, then Arsenal away 2-0, the 6-1 against Brighton. It's been so many results under Unai Emery. The Man, the man, so the man City win was very good. Yeah, it, that was, was it, wasn't, it wasn't just it wasn't just the win. It was the manner of the win. Yeah. It was, it was like we literally outplayed them. Yeah. Uh particularly after because we'd played we played a big game in Europe, hadn't we? The we the, the the midweek, had we? Or, what, oh, we did, played. We played Bournemouth a few days before. Okay, then we right. City, then we played Arsenal. That's right. Bournemouth. Yeah. So, so Man City was the midweek game, wasn't it? And yeah. then Arsenal was the weekend. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah. That was that was an, an unbelievable no, performance. No Pep Guardiola team has ever been so statistically destroyed. Ever, yeah. Ever. Yeah. It was, it was that, the most comprehensive beating Guardiola's ever had in his life. Career. Yeah. I'm just, I, I honestly, I'm I'm actually gutted that we didn't. We didn't score more. We deserved that. That scoreline didn't didn't reflect the dominance that yeah. we had in that it game. Should have been four 0 It genuinely so, was that amazing. So, so that I mean that performance and that obviously that result was that that would rank quite high for me as well. But you're right. But, I mean, these are all. I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? Because these are all results which happened in recent months and years. So obviously, mm-hmm. in terms of your recollection, you remember them much more clearly. Yeah. But I I can't think of a. I mean. If you if you're looking back, O'Neill, there's sort of the Derby six one game that was five that was, five five one was it? The, the five, five one, one sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah five um, one. Because oh, oh, sorry, the, no, Dar- I thought you meant the Birmingham City Derby when. We oh, beat oh, sorry. Well, that that as well. I mean, yeah, that as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, and actually, the one where we beat them four two when Alan Hutton scored that ridiculous goal. Yeah, yeah. Um, even the, the 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 win where Grealish scored the win after being thumped by uh, one of their fans. That yeah, was, that was fun. And then so, there's a yeah. few. Like I've been, I went to when we we beat Arsenal, Wenger's Arsenal because we don't have that many results against big big teams. No, you know yeah. that's that's been a real bugbear for so, decades now. Where we don't like we've had awful like awful records against Man United at home and Arsenal at home. Mm. We didn't beat Arsenal at home from '98 till night 2019. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was the same United '95 to '22. It's it's awful. And um, yeah. So I, I was there in 98 as well when we beat Arsenal. We were 2-0 down, came back and won 3-2. And that Arsenal team, the Arsenal-Wenger team, was really at its 
really strong team and we beat Man United never with anything the kids match another game was at 3-1 first day of the season like their special games but I just think there's something about this Bayern win that was like I'd say it's equal now to the 94 Coca-Cola Cup final for me just because of the the feeling of it the unique vibe of it the the Champions League theme the 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 sheer weight of who Bayern Munich are as well and you know the resonance with the 82 win you know, yeah, the right, the rhythm with it now, the Gary Shaw song that everyone was singing. It was yeah. just such a magical, and, and, magical night. And also buy in, I, and I know they didn't win the league last season, of course, but that it's not like they're some faded star of a club. They're not. They're not like the Man United of the Bundesliga. No. They're still at the top of their game. Incredible um, team. Yeah, they're incredible. Yeah, their yeah. squad's incredible, and they they they've beaten teams this season. So you know, five nil, six one, nine two. Um, there's just multiple batterings of teams leading up until they drew one all with Leverkusen and then lost one nil to us. And it's, um, I, ju- I just think, I think in time I'll always look back on that game as like, do you know what? I think that was really, really unique and special. But the the trick is now, you know, I keep looking at other potential top four clubs and looking at their results because I'm like, I'm desperate for this to continue. I really mm. think Villa need, I really want Villa to establish themselves as a Champions League club regularly. Uh, I think I do, I do think under Emery it will become a thing that we do multiple times, um, but, uh, but yeah. So I want this this Bayern Munich to win win to be something that in a few years' time I look back on and go, that's as well as this our victories over multiple top European sides like when we beat Juventus, we beat Atletico Madrid, we beat we even beat Real Madrid, we beat Barca, all these teams that we play against, and we're like. You know, we figure out a way of playing in Europe. We get there regularly and we get multiple huge wins. So, you know, Tottenham did it. No one would have thought they could have ever done it and they did it. You know, why not believe that Villa can do it as well? Yeah, absolutely. And and, and these are, as you say, Frankie, these are sort of memories that you can bank because who knows when this ride comes to an end. Um, uh, and, and, and Never, and what... never, George. <laughs> it never. will never end. It's we like are... the shockwave roller coaster at Drayton Manor that just goes on and on and on forever. <laughs> yeah. Never ends. <laughs> It never ends, but you know, if for ex- if if the ride breaks down at some point, it, it, it could happen. Um, you know, you want to bank all these memories, don't you? Yeah, because yeah. you never know, as I said, when they might roll around again. Uh, I mean, I, if you asked someone in '82 when they thought the next time Villa would be in Europe, um, or '83, the next time Villa would be in Europe, um, I, I doubt many would say, you know, <laughs> forty-two years. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so yeah, cherish, cherish, cherish the memories that Emery is creating, and cherish these matches because they are, um, they are, uh, they are rare. They are very rare. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, like, it's like when I meet you, George. I cherish the memories every time we meet in person. <laughs> Same. Well, I'm actually. I tell you what, Frankie, you. not to not to keep banging on about this award ceremony, but I am very much looking forward to seeing you um, in your resplendent best. Uh, yes. In um, yeah, we're going to be dressed like Dumb and Dumber, stadium. right? When they, yeah, when like in Dumb and Dumber, you know, the film when they're wearing those uh, bright orange and then bright blue suits, yeah, and they've got top hats and canes. That's sort of the vibe we're going to we're going to go for. So even if we don't win, we'll still we'll win the sartorial awards. We well, we're just like held. just like when Villa won uh, won beat Bayern Munich and left us memories forever. We with our sartorial elegance, with our Dumb and Dumber look, we will leave memories that will last forever. In a bad way for everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Everybody there will be like, who the hell are these dogs? Kick them out. Kick them out. <laughs> Kick them out. They're out. <laughs> it's just, it's eliminated out. from 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 the from the Who nominated so. this lot? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. Please vote for us. Um, so there we are, Frankie. What a what a what a I mean been a very, very boring, uh, very boring result today. But um, as you say, we've had some fantastic memories. Uh, along the way, I would be very keen to hear what the um, our, our audience, uh, if you're watching, if you're listening, uh, let us know what your favourite result is. I'm really interested to know. Mm. I think I'm I am going to nail my flag to the mast here and say 94, 96, the ninety six league cup okay. win. I think just for the trophy and the and all the rest of it. But Bayern, I mean, it's it's almost difficult to compete because they're two mm. different <laughs> epochs, aren't they? Yeah, but, different. Um, but you know incredible results so um so there we are uh thank you everybody for listening we do appreciate you as ever i've been your host george Zelinski. frankie catch you later catch you in a bit george up the mighty villa up the villa it's goodbye from me too we'll be back again soon of course but until then come on super aston villa <laughs>